36, 30. Good evening, and uh, welcome to this town hall with our Congress member, Carolyn uh, Maloney, uh, America's Congress member. She's fighting us for us in Washington and uh, doing great work for us. We're also joined by uh, Small Business Services here in the city of New York. Uh, and we actually, this is the first event for uh, Commissioner Janelle Doris. So uh, we're gonna have lots of great uh, chance to meet our new commissioner. And then we'll also have uh, his staff, uh, Miguelina Aristi, from who will be coming, going through some of the questions. Received a lot of questions. Uh, we have over 100 RSVPs for uh, today. And just in terms of how we've been dealing with the uh, coronavirus here in the district, we've been working very closely with our Congress member on every single issue. Uh, key pieces, we've been able to work with some of the hospitals in the district on new testing and new testing sites, uh, which is always great news. Uh, and so we'll be able to process more testing. We're hoping to get a whole new type of test available so we can test a lot more people. Uh, we've been able to open beds in the district uh, and we've been able to do so much. If you're on this call, odds are you get my newsletter or you follow me on social media. So you probably have a really great idea of all the things we've been uh, working on. And uh, the other thing is you might be hearing my daughter in the background. This is the uh, new normal and it is close to dinner time. Uh, and I couldn't be prouder or happier to be home with her, but uh, I will say it is tough on parents. Uh, I want to talk about our Congress member, Congress member Carolyn Maloney. Uh, she has been fighting for us in Washington, D.C. for uh, years, and most recently as chair of the Oversight Committee, the first woman to chair the Oversight Committee. Uh, she was able to help get, I think we're now up to three stimulus bills, and we're about to learn more about a fourth stimulus bill. And she will also be working on making sure that we get oversight on the stimulus. I uh, don't want to take up any more time. I'd like to get to our Congresswoman so she can get back to fighting for us in Washington, either in person and virtually. Please join me in welcoming Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ben. And it's great to hear your daughter. But thank you for your leadership um, in so many areas and for bringing us together on this important call. And thank you, too, to our New York City Small Business Administration Commissioner, uh, Jamel Doris, uh, for joining us as well to give us uh, some insight uh, from the local level. I, I uh, don't even have time to figure out the Zoom. I've, I've been in conference calls all day on the next package, which we intend to vote on on this Friday. It is a bold, large package. It will be over $2 trillion, more like three. And uh, we need it desperately. Uh, every day we see the need for further action to combat this uh, war against the coronavirus. Uh, it's a war we've been losing. Uh, we're months into the pandemic and the numbers are devastating. More than 80,000 dead, that's more than died in the in this Vietnam War. 1.3 million confirmed cases. We have a third of the cases in the country coming from New York and we're over a third uh, nationally in the world. And more than 33 million initial unemployment claims. They, uh, the economists are saying the economic shocks from this are greater than the Great Depression. So we have a challenge ahead of us. Uh, and that's why we are uh, really working on a far reaching legislation that will protect the lives and livelihoods of American people and really literally the life of our democracy. The bill commits another 75 billion for testing, tracing and treatment, uh, which we need for science-based uh, path to safety. We had 25 billion in the last CARES package. This one will have 75 billion. And as uh, Ben mentioned, there'll be a hearing tomorrow in the new select committee on why are we not doing better? We can go to the moon. Why can't we get the tests out to the people that need it? And if you're concerned about opening up the economy, that's the step we have to take before we can open up the, the economy. Uh, the number one concern we're hearing from our governor and our mayor is aid for our uh, state and local governments. And the bill will have almost a trillion dollars, as in T, uh, for local governments, for the front lines of workers who desperately need the pay, the healthcare workers, police, fire, transportation, EMS, teachers, and other vital workers uh, who keep us safe and are in danger of losing their jobs if we do not get this aid to our city states. Uh, it also 
has a uh, 200 billion heroes fund to ensure they, that our essential workers get hazardous pay. It, it uh, focuses on putting money directly into the pockets of families, up to 6,000 per household, new payroll protection measures to keep 60 million workers connected with their jobs, and extending the weekly 600 federal unemployment payments through next January. And it supports our small businesses uh, by strengthening the payroll protection program to ensure that it reaches the underserved communities, nonprofits of all sizes and types, and responds flexibly to small businesses by providing 10 billion, as in B for COVID-19, emergency grants through the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. I know from talking to our small business, I, I would like to hear your stories. Uh, uh, my staff is on the phone. You can call and tell the stories uh, or get a help with your, your applications with either Shelby Gardner or Jake uh, Friedman. They're on the phone now. My office number is 202-225-7944. And uh, this one is be more flexible. I'm pushing to make a change. Right now, 75% of the money has to go for employees 25 to get keep the business afloat with utility payments and rent so forth. We're trying to make that more of a 50-50 and other flexibility. We are having, a, we're a, a, a designating that a lot of this money has to go out of, of types of organizations that deal with small businesses. Uh, and we've also sent out a letter really this week uh, to large corporations that got the money saying uh, it was supposed to go to small businesses in dire need, explain to us why you need this money or give this money back. So we're investigating now already where the money went. Uh, we have a, a meeting of the new select committee uh, tracing uh, the money, the, the three trillion that's already been allocated to make sure that it's spent correctly. I wanna mention something very briefly that's very important to the economic future of our, of our city. As chairwoman of the oversight committee, I'm char charged with seeing, overseeing the 2020 census. And, and as we face the coronavirus, a full and accurate census counts more than ever, anything. We are right now undercounted, particularly in my district, which is the Upper East Side. Many people are out of town. They don't realize they can go and fill it out online. And we should. For each person we count, it's roughly 2,700 per student if you count your young people in our educational system. I did a study that if it was, we were undercounted uh, uh, how much it would mean and we would lose hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm doing a study now with Hiking Jeffries on if we were undercounted by 1%, what would it mean in the distribution of $1.5 trillion uh, that we divide up based on census numbers around the country every year. If we're not counted, we don't get that money that we need for our transit, our hospitals, our schools. Uh, we need to get everybody counted and you should all work to make sure that anyone interacting with your business or your workers fill out their form. It's very, very critical. And uh, for the census to work, we need to fully fund the US Postal Service uh, to, and, and uh, they need, we need to fund them so that they can deliver the census forms that we need and other information, uh, the medications, and really voting. We're going to be voting by mail for the first time. So the Postal Service is supposed to run out of money, they're projecting, by the end of September. So I worked very hard with the, my committee to get $25 billion in uh, the next package to fund the Postal Service uh, so that we... Don't, if we, so we can act now to save it. So that's very, very important. Uh, a lot of our constituents, uh, as Ben knows, are very concerned about the relief for small business and renters. And uh, we, as a member of the select committee to oversee the, the, the PPP program, uh, we sent a letter last week to the largest companies who received it, demanding that they return the loans so we can shore up more funds for the small businesses who truly need them uh, or else explain why they need it. So we're putting tough oversight there. And we are, are really expanding the eligibility, as I said, for nonprofits and other 501c3s, uh, such a, so that our, our, our chambers of commerce, local and nonprofits area can help us. And uh, 
we, we got into this package rent relief uh, for all who need it. And we realized we don't want to disrupt the whole system. So it creates an emergency rental assistance uh, fund that would have a hundred billion emergency fund to help families and individuals pay their rent and utility bills. Uh, we understand that, it, that this has to be paid for it to, to continue the service for people. So we are, we are working in a multitude of, of areas. Uh, lastly, I want to mention a bill that grew out, grew out of New York. Um, after 9-11, we created the, the, uh, the anti-terrorism risk insurance plan, which allowed us to go forward after 9-11. Uh, we couldn't get any insurance to rebuild. All buildings stopped until we passed the bill. That was a bill that I authored. So they asked me to uh, work on a pandemic risk insurance act going forward. We're planning for the next pandemic. And I have that on my website. It's out for comment. I haven't introduced it yet. But it's the only bill, Ben, that I've introduced that I have people coming to me and wanting to co-sponsor at major business organizations before it's even been introduced. There's such a need and concern for it. So I believe it will be something that will be in the next uh, package going forward. We hope to pass this bill on Friday um, in Congress. It's, it, things change all the time, but right now it's scheduled for this Friday. Leader uh, McConnell has said he's not ready to act on it. He's not gonna act on anything, so he says until June. So the minute we get together, we'll start negotiating after Friday with him on a, another package. And after that, we will start working on an infrastructure package, which New York desperately needs. And in that infrastructure package, we will be pushing the major infrastructure projects and, and rail roads, bridges that need to be repaired. Uh, we've all worked together to open up the Kosciusko Bridge, the Second Avenue subway. Uh, we need to finish the East Side Connector. We did open up the, the L train. All of that was a, uh, a major, major federal funding. So we need to get our, our transportation and infrastructure priorities next. It's been a busy time. I need to go back to my meetings so that I can represent New York interests and make sure we get our fair share in this, uh, this deal that's going forward. It is going to be bold and it's going to be huge and it's going to take care of all of our needs. And I want to make sure we get our fair share. So Ben, I want to thank you for allowing me to be part of this. I look forward to your stories. I want to hear about your problems, uh, but I also want to hear about your success stories. I want to tell people that it has worked for some of our small businesses. Get your stories back to my office so I can share them with my colleagues in Congress and let us know how this program needs to be changed for small businesses to work better for you. I yield back. Uh, thank you to our Congress <laughs> member, Carol Maloney. Before we go on to our next speaker, I want to share a very important date with folks. Uh, we actually have an election coming up. It's going to be on Tuesday, June 23rd, 2020. There will be a federal and state primary. The President of the United States will be on the ballot. Congress will be on the ballot. State offices will be on the ballot. Uh, for the first time ever, everyone can vote by mail you must check off temporary illness and you can submit it online at nycabsentee.com you can email it in to absentee june 2020 at boe.nyc uh, you can fax it in at 212-487-5349 for manhattan uh, and of course, you can still mail it in and you can even request it by phone at 866-VOTE-NYC. Uh, you need to make sure that you have your application done by June 16th, 2020. Uh, if you've already submitted your absentee ballot application, you can get it up to 32 days before the election and your absentee ballot must be postmarked by June 22nd, 2020. You are allowed to request an absentee ballot, mail it in, and then day of decide to go in person. Uh, it's completely up to you. The easiest, best way to do it is nycabsentee.com. You can learn more at benkalos.com. You can also learn more at vote.nyc, but please make sure to go out and vote. It was great, it's most complete I've heard. Uh, and uh, we wanna thank our uh, Congress member again, and thank you for all the work you're doing in 
Washington. Uh, I now want to, uh, to uh, introduce our uh, next speaker that is uh, the director of the, uh, is, is the new Small Business uh, Services Commissioner, Janelle Doris. Uh, we have a lot in common, in particular that we are both the products of the State University of New York. Uh, we went to <laughs> two different SUNYs. Uh, but we're both very involved in student government, and uh, now we are involved yeah. in actual government. As director of the Office of Minority and Women-Owned Enterprises, uh, Janelle Doris led a massive expansion of MWBE contracting, awarding $14.6 billion in contracts to MWBE since 2015, which is $1 billion ahead of the city's goal. Uh, and, and just to be clear, uh, because in the city, we are so bad as a city at doing business with women. So if you are a woman on this call, uh, you will face often discrimination when you try to do business with the city. This provides a preference to try to offset that discrimination. Also, if you are a person of color, uh, you will also face that same discrimination. And so this system is meant to do that. And Janelle has done a great job there. And uh, he's been promoted to SBS commissioner. Uh, he will ensure the city continues to support small business in every community as we recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. So I'll turn it over to Janelle and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, uh, Council Member Kalos. We are so appreciative of you uh, taking the time and uh, to do this for our small businesses and really appreciate your consistency on the small business issue. I think you've been a champion uh, for our small businesses and appreciate you even when uh, in my previous role as the director of the mayor's office of minority and women-owned business enterprises you were there uh, speaking with us uh, bringing us and holding us accountable and we are you know, eternally uh, appreciative for your commitment and then of course it continues today in this uh, really dire situation our businesses are facing um, so thank you for the invitation to be with you tonight um, good evening to everyone and to Congresswoman Maloney. Wow, we don't have a you know bigger champion uh, than our Congress uh, uh, members uh, who are there uh, fighting for us day in and day out like Congresswoman Maloney. And so thank you so much for what you're doing. Uh, we sent a lot of recommendations to our delegation and they have uh, you know, listened to us, fought for us, and made some critical changes. Uh, one particular change was critical for our MWBEs and small businesses across the city was really getting funding to uh, the CDFIs or Community Development Financial Institutions, the smaller uh, lending institutions who actually deal with the community and help smaller businesses. And my, I myself, when I was a small business, went to uh, CDFI for assistance and they were extremely helpful. And so uh, we are so grateful uh, that they were able to do that. And thanks again to our entire uh, delegation um, for what they're doing for small businesses also. Nidia Velasquez, all of, all of our uh, con Congress people and uh, members, we are so happy and thankful uh, for their work. And, and again, um, we appreciate it. So good evening, everyone. I hope that uh, you and, and your families are as good, in as good of health as can possibly be during this time. Um, uh, we know that it's a trying time for the city and the nation and really the world. And uh, we begin to see, yes, families are being shaken and, uh, you know, cities and municipalities and states uh, and countries are being shaken. And we know that this is also true for our small business community. Um, we all know um, that this is a tough time for New Yorkers in particular and our local economy. Uh, our city is resilient and we will come back and come back stronger. Um, it is undeniable that small businesses are the backbone of our economy. And uh, we know that, you know, we will sustain some serious, uh, you know, trauma right now as small businesses, but we know that uh, you contribute to the growth of the city and we have to do everything in our power to get you back up and running. Um, and we want to support you uh, both immediately and in an equitable way uh, for the future of our economy, uh, really, especially for the neediest communities. Um, I want to go through a few things that we've been doing and also highlighting a few things uh, that's out there for small businesses. Uh, it may take a few minutes, so please, uh, we are, uh, our team is here to take uh, questions, et cetera, but I want to make sure that I give as much information as I possibly can. Um, this New York City, as you know, uh, we uh, 
had uh, an opportunity to roll out a few products I'll talk about in a bit, but really we, this, this, this problem is so enormous that we really needed the federal government support and help. Um, so thus far, the federal government has offered two rounds of small business funding administered by the uh, SBA. Um, you may have heard about the programs being offered by uh, SBA. Um, one of them is the PPP program that the Congresswoman talked about uh, and the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Fund uh, that also was being used and uh, you know, accessed by uh, small businesses across the country. These are programs whose funding was exhausted one before, but then it was replenished. Um, we heard that about $100 billion is still available in the program. So if you're a small business owner uh, who has been considering applying to PPP, the most important message I want to share with you on this call is don't wait too long. Apply now. Apply, and the way you do that, you go to your bank, local bank, uh, local CDFI. Uh, you ask them, request an application, and if they're participating, and they will then assist you in getting your application up and running. Um, the PPP, as mentioned, is 100% federally guaranteed loans to small businesses, nonprofits, self-employed, or gig workers. Um, and then the loans can go up to $10 million. Loans can be up to 2.5 times the borrower's average monthly payroll cost, not to exceed 10 million. If employers maintain your payroll, the loan is forgiven for up to eight weeks. And I want to say that, you know, this is a challenge for many of our small businesses, uh, particularly our seasonal businesses, our restaurants, and so forth, this eight, eight weeks, uh, eight weeks uh, a requirement. And so one of the things we've put forth to the federal government to change is to increase that eight weeks and move it up. Also, the Congresswoman spoke about uh, the rent uh, component and utilities component of the uh, of the loan is only 25% now, and we also are pushing for at least a 50-50 model because we know that here in New York City, um, rent is extremely, uh, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's high and it's also a challenge um, for our small businesses. And so we want to make sure that you have the funding to, to do what you need to do uh, to assist um, you, you with the, 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 uh, the loans that you need and that actually make sense for you. Um, I want to say also that, you know, for technical assistance and support, you know, SBS, that's what we do. And uh, we are always here to help you. And so you can visit our website at nyc.gov forward slash COVID-19 biz, B-I-Z. That is nyc.gov forward slash COVID, C-O-V-I-D, 19, B-I-Z, for more information. Um, and uh, you can call 311 and certainly we'll be able to help and direct you. Um, technical assistance that we provide, we provide virtually uh, with information sessions and webinars and small group sessions and in one-on-one -on -one settings. Uh, we are also continuing to help uh, businesses learn about the connect with other pro and connect sorry with other private um, other private lenders and philanthropic sources. Um, small businesses owners also across the nation are competing for these same federal resources. So SBS is targeting areas in the city where there's high concentration of what we say low and moderate income households, foreign born New Yorkers and minority and women owned businesses to ensure New York City small businesses owners get their fair share. Uh, from the federal government. Um, again, you can reach out to my agency for technical assistance to help you with packaging your application by visiting New York City, NYC, sorry, gov, uh, dot gov forward slash COVID-19 biz. Um, I also want to say that, you know, uh, at SBS, we help a lot of businesses um, very early on. And I think we wanted to let you know, you know, the enormity of the problem, uh, even though we stood up the employee retention grant and the business continuity loan fund, uh, you know, the enormity of the problem caused us to really have to wait and seek out the federal support. And uh, we, yet we were able to uh, grant over 3,000 businesses, totaling over $23 million uh, in our grant program, and 200 loans, uh, totaling about $12.6 million so far in our loan program. Uh, once these programs were executed and folks were getting uh, the resources, we then sent out to uh, the federal government and started connecting folks to the federal government PPP program and uh, uh, that came out of the CARES Act that was passed. Um, I would like to say a few more things about SBS programs and outreach. 
our agency continues really to operate virtually and offering our wide range of services. Um, our NYC Business Solution Centers, Workforce One Centers are operating remotely and are available for those who need help and support. Um, again, you can definitely reach us at our Workforce Center. Uh, we, and by the way, we will make sure that we leave all this information with the council member. Uh, but again, nyc.gov, if you're in front of your computer, nyc.gov forward slash COVID 19 WF1. That's for the Workforce One Centers. For those who are seeking employment, we are there to help you. Also, the Business Solution Centers, our experts are available to help business owners identify additional financing available through our 40 uh, le plus lenders. We have a large uh, network of lenders uh, and local philanthropic organizations who are looking to help our small business services. Just a few more points and uh, we will wrap. Um, I know many of you uh, are facing rent challenges and we have legal support and uh, to help you and also with fraud prevention. Um, I also wanna to touch on these few items uh, finally. So um, we know that business owners are facing enormous financial pressure. And we know that you guys have, you know, uncertainty at this time, so especially in regard to your rent. And so last week, the governor extended the moratorium on evictions for those facing COVID-related hardship and additional 60 days until August 20th for residential and commercial tenants. This is both residential and commercial. The state also banned late fees and missed payments uh, during the eviction moratorium period. There has been some legislation discussing around, uh, discussion around uh, regarding a rent freeze and forgiveness. However, this time we recommend that business owners engage with their landlords to discuss changes to their lease obligations, which might include a rent deferral, abatement of reduction or reduction among other actions. Um, our commercial lease assistance program uh, can help review leases to determine what business rights and obligations are negotiations um, and, and help you with negotiating with payments, et cetera. Um, so I, I, I want you to know that you can go to our website, nyc.gov forward slash C-O-M-M lease. Again, nyc.gov forward slash C-O-M-M lease to learn more and apply for legal services, legal services from SBS. Um, we want everyone to, to encourage business owners to be very cautious of websites and emails that may be fraudulently claiming to represent the government financing programs. And so be careful. Uh, please make sure that it ends in .gov uh, and those of their banking partners before sharing any sensitive information. So make sure that you are, you know, you are actually sharing information with the right folks because we know that uh, fraud is out there and you wanna make sure that you uh, don't get uh, trapped there. So uh, in conclusion, uh, we wanna you know, touch on insurance. We understand um, you know, insurance companies are sitting on over $800 billion of reserves and can afford to actually count uh, COVID expenses as a covered item. Uh, they're not doing that at the moment and we're pushing and uh, to do that, uh, the former, uh, SBS Commissioner Greg Bishop uh, released a uh, op-ed on this uh, not too long ago, uh, saying that we do need some insurance reform. And so it, our partners at the City Bar Justice Center recently launched a new initiative to provide free legal assistance to small businesses to help them navigate insurance-related claims, okay? Uh, again, they are helping you to navigate insurance-related claims. This is from the City Bar Justice Center. Again, all this information we'll make available to the council member to send out to you. Uh, and other legal and, co and contractual issues, such as leases, uh, they are helping you with as well. Um, and we will send their contact information, but just in case you need it, the number is 212-382-6633, or you can email them at n-e-l-p at citybar. Dot org. Again, N-E-L-P at citybar.org. Um, so thank you for allowing me to share these important updates. I assure you that New York City government is here for you and your communities in this difficult time. And I encourage you to reach out to the city for help of any kind, uh, whether uh, to find healthcare providers, mental health support, food assistance, anything. Always, of course, 311 is there to assist 
But as a business, you are also welcome to visit our website at nyc.gov forward slash COVID-19 BIZ. nyc.gov forward slash COVID-19 BIZ. Councilman, thank you so much. And a thank you to the small businesses on this phone here. We know the the uh, the real serious uh, um, nature, really, of this particular pandemic. Uh, we are experiencing as a city with you know eight plus billion dollar deficit. So you understand, we understand fully what you're dealing with as a small business, and we're here to give you as much support as you need. So thank you, Council Member, for uh, allowing me to speak today and. Uh, I, my team is here to answer questions, and we will get also some of this information we shared here tonight, particularly the contact information, to everyone. So thank you so much. Thank you so very much for your report, uh, and thank you for everyone who is uh, still with us on the call. Uh, we're streaming live on social media. We received more than 60 questions for tonight's town hall. We will do our best to get to as many of these as we can without going all night. Uh, and we've grouped similar questions together. If your question does not get asked, please email bkalos at benkalos.com and we'll do our best to get you an answer. Uh, we're gonna start off and we're gonna turn to uh, the SBS staff uh, for some of our questions. Uh, and so uh, the first question that we have, which I think is at the top of everyone's mind, is uh, when can we start to open? Hi, good afternoon. Can, can you guys hear me well? Yes, we can. Yeah, so in, in regards to opening, um, earlier this week, the, gover the governor released a statement um, regarding uh, the the different faces for for upstate new york um and starting to allow certain non-essential businesses to reopen um however at this time we do not have updates related to the city but i do want to encourage everyone to sign up um as the commissioner mentioned and visit our website uh related to covid19 business updates um please sign up uh via nyc.gov slash covid19 biz um, we also offer guidance emails on a weekly basis, so I encourage all business owners to sign up. Um, also visit our website for um, support and guidance on, on reopening and, and, and um, guidance for, for essential businesses at this moment. What financial resources is my company eligible for? What services are available for small businesses, uh, specifically from the city? and from the federal government. Uh, what about solo entrepreneurs, uh, companies that employ freelancers, industries such as catering, restaurants, or transportation? Thank you so much, council member, for that question. Um, I just wanna echo the commissioner's remarks. We right now have available uh, virtual technical assistance and financing assistance via our um, uh, satellites of business solution centers. So businesses can access free virtual assistance um, for federal programming along with any other local and philanthropic opportunities uh, via our centers. I will drop the link on, uh, I believe there's a chat box, um, but, but also share with the council member so he may share with, with you all. Uh we do not have a chat enabled and we have a number of folks in by phone. Uh, so if you don't mind doing your best to share the link, uh, so folks, sure. and we will do our best to make it available in our next newsletter update. Definitely, definitely. And I just want to um, reiterate that that link um, that we mentioned earlier, nyc.gov slash COVID-19 BIZ. Um, there is a tab for uh, financing assistance and business services. Thank you. Uh, for small businesses that have received the PPP loan, but will there, will there be any other assistance for businesses after the eight week period? Will the next stimulus bills allow an extension beyond the eight weeks of the paid PPP period? What should we do after eight weeks are over? Yeah, so um, we, at, at, as the agency, we are working with our federal delegations as well to um, 
amplify the eight week uh, term. We understand that there are challenges related to that and I hope that that influences the third stimulus bill that's being uh, discussed right now. We would love a real time update with specifics at this point. We all know that the shortcomings of EIDL and PPP is the city's program being reopened Will there, uh, so will, is this city's program being reopened? For um, our, our previous loan program? I believe that was the intent of the person's question. Yeah, so we are still processing applications related to the city program until funds are exhausted. Currently the loan program is on pause and we are working with our federal and congressional delegations to advocate for their round of stimulus funding for small businesses. So I, I, I hear that that's, that's coming along. Um, and so to, to echo the commissioner, we encourage everyone to please um, connect with our financing assistance so that we could get the ball rolling on PPP application and um, you know, ensure that uh, the, the city's small businesses um, are able to apply and, and receive the funding that's available from the federal programs. We got a lot of similar questions relating to commercial rents. Yes. Uh, particularly around resources to cover rents, assistance in negotiating rent, uh, and whether or not SBS or the city can freeze or forgive commercial rent. Thank you for that question, Councilman. Um, at the moment, there are no current policies related to rent freeze, but we at SBS can connect you to free legal services via our commercial lease assistance program. This program provides you with an attorney to help you re review your current lease terms and negotiate set terms with your landlord on your, on your behalf at no cost to you. Um, please connect with our free legal commercial lease assistance program. Again, um, we have lawyers available um, that also speak multiple languages that are available to negotiate these terms on your behalf. Um, please visit the following website for our intake form. It's nyc.gov slash comlease. That's spelled out C-O-M-M-L-E-A-S-E. -E. Again, that link is nyc.gov slash comlease. Um, nyc.gov slash C-O-M-M-L-E-A-S-E. -E. Um, just an update regarding the eviction moratorium, if um, our constituents missed it earlier on, the government has announced a rent moratorium extension until August 20th for, for both residential and commercial residents. The state is also ba banning late payments of fees for missed rent payments during the moratorium and allowing renters facing financial hardships to use their security deposit as payment. Um, I know that that may not be um, the, the best response at the moment, but I do want to encourage everyone on this call that's having issues related with their commercial rent to connect with our free commercial lease assistance program. Along the same lines, we've also gotten a, a little bit, a lot of outreach. So if you're a business in Manhattan, uh, you not only have to pay your landlord rent, but you also have to pay uh, your rent. Uh, you, you pay uh, taxes, real estate taxes, uh, commercial real estate tax, and Take Root Justice uh, has posed a question along with a number of other people from the community, which is, uh, what can the city do to abate the uh, commercial rent tax uh, and either forgive it or allow people a longer payment period at no interest or what have you and eliminate the fees? How, how, can, how can a business that isn't earning income uh, pay the city their real estate taxes and what, what can the city do? And Mayor de Blasio in particular. Yeah, that in, in terms of the, the city taxes, um, I could take that back um, to, to our commissioner and, and help influence. But at, at the moment, there, there are no current um, policies regarding um, payment relief. One, a, a number of people reached out relating to the fact that before the pandemic, we, we had a, a different sort of problem, which was the health of our small businesses and the fact that there were hundreds, if not thousands of empty storefronts throughout Manhattan. Uh, 
what's going to happen with all those empty storefronts? Is there a way to fix them? And then in particular, is there a possibility of changing the laws that encourage commercial landlords to keep spaces vacant? Yeah, we, we've heard from, from different constituencies and small businesses regarding the concerns of vacancy um, and, and, we're, and other relevant stakeholders. Um, and so we are having those conversations with our partners to see if there's any support on that end. But, but, but we, hear, we hear that concern um, and, and we're, we're working on, on identifying uh, support on that end. Okay, we're still just reviewing some of the late submissions on questions that just came in. Uh, just looking, uh, we, we did get a number of questions about essential workers uh, legislation that I've introduced along with uh, Speaker Corey Johnson. There are three bills in the package. Uh, the bill that I've put forward is a bill that would say that if you are a worker, and you're an essential worker, and you ask for uh, protective equipment, that you wouldn't be allowed to be terminated for asking for that equipment, whether you asked your boss, your boss's boss, the CEO, uh, whether you had to organize workers to step out like they did at the Amazon warehouse, um, or you were one of the nurses or doctors who courageously spoke out, we would be providing those protections. Uh, we've heard from a lot of different folks from for-profit, non-profit, from uh, organized labor to just uh, to, to any people in the marketplace with different concerns that if it was uh, misconstrued, it could be abused and that anyone could avail themselves of this. And so one of the questions is what is the current process? And so we had a hearing on the legislation. We've heard from a lot of people. And uh, what's important to me is that the bill does what it wants, which is in about eight minutes, uh, we're gonna pause this briefly to uh, clap and we may even close our call on the uh, thank you to our heroes. Uh, but our goal for the legislation is to protect our heroes, not to allow people to abuse the system. So uh, if you have any suggestions or ways to improve it so that we can protect our essential workers, uh, you can email policy at bencalos.com and we will take it under advisement. Uh, the record actually closed last Friday, but it was, a, uh, it was open for that most of that week. Uh, just looking for additional questions. Give me a moment. Uh, this is a uh, idea that we've heard about from our first Fridays. Uh, and I really like uh, this idea. And uh, today it is being presented uh, by Carnegie Hill Neighbors, uh, one of our neighborhood associations. And uh, the question is, can we expand outdoor seating for restaurants beyond their storefront footprints if adjacent spaces are closed or vacant to allow for more dining tables. Carnegie Hill neighbors would like to know if expanding outdoor seating beyond one's property line is possible with the consent of adjacent property owners rather than going through government. This would allow for more income to operating businesses or losing revenue due to social distancing orders yet have no break in operating costs and possibly more with new rules coming into effect. Uh, perhaps differences between drinking establishment and full service restaurants come into play. Other states are allowing outdoor seating to open first, and in some towns, out-of-state streets are closed for residential restaurants to put tables out. During our first Friday, folks talked about changing parking spots into outdoor seating, uh, which would be another way past having to deal with your neighbors. You could just move the sidewalk cafes uh, into where there would normally be parking lanes. Uh, we've also had outreach about closing down streets to expand our green markets to make it easier for people to shop and then similarly from this question closing down streets so that they can be turned into safe socially distant restaurants. Hi, sorry, I was I was back to being muted. Um, thank you for that. Uh, yes, th this is this is a, a strategy and feedback that we've heard um, from from our small business community, and it's something that um, we we are looking into. So at the moment, I, I do not have a response for that, but uh, hopefully we'll have some 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 updates regarding that soon. We received a number of questions relating to unemployment. If you are still having difficulty gaining access to unemployment, please email me, bkalos at bencalos.com, 
and we will advocate on your behalf and try to work with the Department of Labor to get your case processed. And for those of you who did indicate unemployment as an issue, we'll actually proactively go reach out to you and see what we can do to be of assistance. We had a question which is very specific which is if there are any specific requirements for paying hourly part-time employees with the Paycheck Protection Plan monies. I'm sorry, can you repeat that question, council member? Uh, they, uh, we had a business write in about if there are any specific requirements for paying hourly part-time employees with Paycheck Protection Plan money. We can go back to the division um, and ask them, but we highly encourage um, small businesses that have received the PPP to speak to their lenders as well. But they can also go on to our website and we're offering webinars where they can actually um, learn more about what they can do with the, the PPP and next steps with the EIDL. Uh, we have a question saying, I am a child care owner and have been closed since March 14th. Given the closings and potential changing guidelines, many of us are not able to reopen due to financial hardship. What are options available for child care centers and preschools that are the support system of working families? Our cost structure will go up with new guidelines, making it harder to sustain given thin margins. PPP was a wonderful initiative for small business like ours, but it allowed us approximately a month of sustainability given all the expenses, including pyro and hay rents. Most businesses are again in the place where they have to lay off employees or potentially close their doors permanently due to extended closures in New York City. What options do child care centers have? Would there be another round of PPP? And I'll just say the reason I asked this, even though it's similar to similar questions is, I'm a dad uh, with my wife and we both work full time. We rely on child care. I will tell you on the Upper East Side, it is very competitive. We are lucky to pay a, a uh, what is equivalent to college tuition uh, to have access to childcare. We know families that didn't even have that option. So we, we can't afford to lose these childcare providers. I definitely understand. I am a mom of a two and a half year old, so I am hurting right now. I'm um, seeing my little one not be able to go to daycare and interact with, with his, his classmates. It's a wonderful thing to, to have our, our little ones in, in early child care. Um, and also it's just a big stepping stone for their education, right? Um, for businesses like daycares, they should definitely connect with um, our business solution centers that they can offer other lending options. Um, like the commissioner said, we have um, a network of more than 40 lenders um, that can work with them. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the PPP or the EIDL, although we, like the Congresswoman said, we are hoping for that next stimulus package um, where she can definitely tap into that funding. There is actually a hundred billion dollars still that the SBA has. They put out a press release yesterday announcing it. Um, and so, like the commissioner said, we highly encourage those looking for um, capital to go to their lenders or their CDFIs and apply. Apply, please. Okay. Uh, I think we've asked a lot of the questions. We've done our best to go through. If you didn't get your question asked, please make sure to reach out to bkalos at uh, benkalos.com and we'll try to get you an answer. I want to thank SBS and Congressman Tony for uh, joining us. It is now seven o'clock. And uh, if you want to join me, we're going to unmute everyone and we're going to applaud our uh, heroes and then we will conclude the call. So thank you very much to everyone who participated. I hope we got you answers and we are here for you to keep our businesses open. Let's cheer. Thank you.
thank you. Thank you all. Please continue the cheer and uh, have a great evening. And we look forward to working with you to keep our small businesses open. Yeah.